What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrad89 here bringing you another video and today wanted to take some time off, you know, from horror, you know, I know it's Halloween season but there's other stuff going on besides horror and right now currently on Disney Plus we have the Star Wars and or TV show streaming and we are about halfway through the series already because we're at episode 7. It's slated for 12 so we're a little over halfway already because it's slated for 12 episodes but we're at episode 7. But today I wanted to take a break, like I said, and talk about what I feel about the TV show so far and how I'm enjoying Star Wars Andor and why I think more people should be watching this show because it's no secret. I'm not going to lie to you right now. Star Wars Andor, the TV show that's going on currently right now, is the greatest live action stuff that we have going on for Star Wars in terms of television series. It's the best out there. So you need to go out there and check it out. So let's get down to talking about what I love about this series. Roll it. So the Andor TV show follows Cassie and Andor, a character that's played by Diego Luna, who was introduced in Star Wars Rogue One, which is one of my favorite Star Wars films. I think in terms of... Disney properties when they picked up the Star Wars uh, property I think Rogue One is like the greatest thing that they've done so far easily the best thing they've done since they've come under the Disney umbrella I think that Rogue One is the best so today we're going to talk about Andor which is like I said focusing on Cassie and Andor and to me what Tony Gilroy who is the showrunner for this show is able to do is really enrich that original franchise for me in terms of the Rebels, Empire, all that era. Like, to, that's my favorite era. I love the Old Republic. Like, I read the books. I love the Old Republic era. I love the Clone Wars and all that stuff. But my favorite era is the Empire Rebel era of Star Wars. And just, like, what this show and what Rogue One were able to do is enrich that original trilogy, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. It just makes them so much better. And you can tell by watching this show, the dialogue the characters, the acting, the storytelling, it's on a whole nother fucking level. Like, for real, this show is miles ahead. Like, I already fired a tweet off about this. This show is miles ahead of any Star Wars TV show that we've gotten in terms of live action. I'm not even lying to you. Andor knows how to build tension. Tony Gilroy, the writer, he knows how to build tension and knows how to create these situations and really have these good subtle nuances and like I said build upon the lore of Star Wars but create tense situations that like I'm watching this show and this is a show that it's a slow burn slow burn I must be honest it's a slow burn type show but what this show offers is just oh man it's so amazing it's like by the time we're getting to that third episode like I didn't even realize that we had like no shootouts really no intense lightsaber scenes, no like crazy chase sequences. There's nothing like that. Like this film or this series really takes its time, Star Wars Andor. And like that's what I love about it is that's something that's lost in terms of TV shows and movies recently is that people just rush things. Story writers and creators and directors, they just rush through plot points and they try to get going. So because people have such short term like short attention spans now like everybody just like everybody's a tiktok generation so the attention span is getting smaller and smaller but me in terms of somebody who's grown up watching 80s and 70s films and i grew up watching tv when we had to watch fucking commercials so star wars Andor, i appreciate this show because the writers and creators are taking their time with these characters and really building the up, building them up like Luthen, like Andor, Mon Mothma, all the characters in this show, Val, everybody is amazing and they're well built and like you could understand where they're all coming from. And I like how this show adds subtle nuances and new layers to the rebellion that we think like, oh, we've, we've come to this a lot. We know so much. We're so saturated with the Empire and the Rebellion era. We know everything No. This show and Rogue One, what they really do is show you what sacrifices and what really it takes to get to that success at the Return of the Jedi or in New Hope. Like to take that journey that we do on the original trilogy, a lot of fans, a lot of people, 
don't realize what sacrifices had to be made in terms of the rebellion and what corners had to be cut and what dirty tactics they had to use. So it's like, I love this show because it shows you that it's not clear cut and dry. There ain't a fucking light side, dark side. It ain't red, green. It ain't nothing like that. It's very gray. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's very gray. And sometimes you have to do the dirty shit to get shit done. And that's what the show is really proving to you too, is that those good guys, sometimes we praise those good people, but we don't realize what they actually had to do to get to the point to be where they're lifted up as such a sacred good person and we look at them as a hero. So that's what's amazing about this show and Rogue One and what Tony Gilroy has done is brought to life, like I said, some of the best, greatest live action content that we've ever seen. Like episode six, The Eye, fuck. That is some of the best Star Wars we've ever seen, ever. Like, I'm watching this episode and I'm like, damn, this is as good as Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, Revenge of the Sith. Like, the moments that they're having in this show and that episode, when they hit episode six, it's like, no. It's just as good as some of these movies that we've been seeing and praising for years and years and years, so... I really want more people to start checking out Andor, and I know this might not be a show for everyone, because like I said, it's a very slow burn. It's more political, and I know a lot of people hate that, but the dialogue, the characters, everything is so rich. It's so, like I said, subtle, nuanced, but it's so much more three-dimensional, and you can feel it, and the weight and the gravitas of the situations that the characters are going through are... It's amazing. Like, for real, I can't stress enough how amazing this show is, and I'm really having a blast, and I'm so happy that it's slated for 12 episodes because, like, I thought we were, we were at episode 7, and I was like, damn, we only got one more left, and then I was like, oh, no, Cassie and Andor is slated for 12 episodes, so what am I saying? I'm so happy about that because I'm tired of these TV shows that are just like, oh, eight episodes, six episodes, miniseries this, 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 that, no. I want me some content, man. I want a good, thick season to really digest and feel it. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm so happy that this show, what they brought to life, like I said, this is in terms of the TV series, this is my favorite so far because Obi-Wan Kenobi, I liked it and I loved the Obi-Wan character, but at the end of that series, I felt like it was just unnecessary. I was like, why did we go through that? Because I didn't learn anything new. Book of Boba Fett is one of those shows that I think it's straight trash until Mando shows up. Like, the first three or four episodes of Book of Boba Fett fucking suck. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You can see right here, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. But the first four episodes of Book of Boba Fett, they suck. Until Mando shows up, that's when it really starts to kick in gear. So that's why I'm like, why couldn't they just do that as Mandalorian Season 3 and then just throw in some Boba Fett episodes? It would have been so much better. And Mandalorian TV series, I love that. And it's a great TV series that's really diving into the Mandalorian lore and enriching that side of the Star Wars universe and that underground kind of crime syndicate stuff. We've never really seen that. But there's a lot of fan service going on in the Mandalorian. And the dialogue and the episodes become very episodic. Andor is so expertly written and when I'm watching it I'm like damn this could have been like a 13 hour movie and I probably would have sat through this shit that's how good it is and I'm like the writing is the key point of this show and that's what I'm trying to get across to you guys is really pay attention to the dialogue but even more than that the actors the cinematography also the music the, like the music really elevates this show because when you hit certain scenes in this show even if there's nothing happening, it's just, oh, that music, it's so, it's crescendoing, and it's beautiful, and it really hits that point where it just really insinuates that this show is something different, and it's something to behold, you know what I mean? Because I can't wait to see and find out what happens in episode eight, and where they're going to take this, because episode seven was kind of like that cliffhanger episode is like, well, we got the mission done in episode six. You know, a lot of people died. We made some noise and made some waves. And now episode seven's kind of setting up a whole new, almost new season. Like we're dropping new hints, new things. And it's like, how are we going to wrap this stuff up? So that's why I'm excited that there's 12 episodes in this 
first season of Andor. And But this is just my thoughts, my feelings, and, and you can tell I'm very high on this show. So as I said, just my thoughts, and I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. Share your feelings and your thoughts and comments on the Andor TV show. Are you loving it? Are you disliking it? Doesn't matter. I would love to hear from all of you because we're all different, and that's the best thing about us. But most importantly, have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.